And it's important to realize that prescription drugs are dangerous materials. Every year, prescription drugs used properly kill 100,000 and injure over 2 million Americans, making these reactions between the fourth and sixth leading cause of death in the United States. The Centers for Disease Control tell us that 96% of HIV-positive Americans are taking antiretroviral drugs. Now, the antiretroviral drugs, the anti-HIV drugs, are far more toxic than your average prescription drug. Severe hepatitis has been reported with all of the currently available classes of antiretroviral drugs. In, all, in other words, all of them. So you, it's not surprising then that liver failure has become the leading cause of death among HIV-positive Americans. And liver failure is not one of those AIDS-defining diseases that uh, the CDC has put in that long list. AZT was the first ARV. ARV, it's a nucleoside analog. Peter Duisberg here ordered a bottle of AZT from Sigma Chemical Company. And you see this little Jolly Roger up here that's on the label. And the warning label reads, Toxic by inhalation, in contact with skin, and if swallowed. <laughs> Target organs, blood, bone marrow. If you feel unwell, seek medical advice. Show the label where possible. Wear suitable protective clothing. <laughs> now, if you're HIV positive, your AZT comes in a bottle that looks like this. No skull and crossbones. No warning to wear suitable protective clothing, etc., etc. No Joey Joe John. No here. The nucleoside analogs are the backbone of the ARVs. They're still the backbone. Usually two of these guys are in the combination that people take. They were developed in the 1960s as cancer chemotherapy. They are cytotoxic, which means they're cell poisons. They're designed to kill dividing cells. AZT was never used as cancer chemo because it was too toxic. The therapeutic index was just too narrow. The, the therapeutic value and the toxic value were so close that they didn't use it for, for chemotherapy. A doctor who prescribes nucleoside analogs for life to a cancer patient would be guilty of malpractice and probably lose his license. But if you're HIV positive or have a Bangui disease, the standard of care is to treat you with these drugs for life. Here's just a short list of some of the diseases, including death, that are caused by the antiretroviral drugs. These on the left include AIDS-defining diseases, immunodeficiency, lipopenia, fever, and so on and so forth. And over here we have other diseases that are not on the CDC's AIDS-defining list. And then there's the hepatitis that we're talking about, which kills a lot of HIV-positive Americans and, not, and other people as well. So you might ask, given all those uh, uh, bad things about the antiretroviral drugs, Aren't the HIV drugs worth the risk? There is not a trace of scientific clinical evidence that the antiretroviral drugs uh, save lives. How do we know this? Well, the drug companies tell us. The prescription, <laughs> the prescription information that comes with Glaxo's uh, Zyogen, for example, says this. You can get, lay your hands on it, and you'll find this in there. At this time, there is no evidence that Zyogen will help you live longer or have fewer of the medical problems associated with HIV and AIDS. Merck's uh, protease inhibitor, Crixivan, is no more encouraging. It says, it is not yet known whether Crixivan will extend your life or reduce your chances of getting other illnesses associated with HIV. Beringer Ingelheim's Viramune, which Africans know better, is Nevirapine, says this, at present, there are no there are no results from controlled clinical trials evaluating the effects of viramune on the incidence of opportunistic infections or survival. And then we have Glaxo's Combivir, which is a mixture of, of, of two uh, antiretroviral drugs. And it says there have been no clinical trials conducted with Combivir. <laughs> Believe me, I was in the pharmaceutical industry for a long time. If there was even a shred of evidence that these things would promote uh, life, or, or improve the quality of life, they would be plastering that everywhere. They would not, they would not have that in here. Okay. AIDS peaked in the USA years before the availability of so-called uh, highly active antiretroviral therapy became available. This is the Center for, Centers for Disease Control data. You can see that AIDS peaked around 1992. Here's the years down here. Years before, as I said, the appearance of heart H-A-R-T, which is shortened to A-R-V these days for antiretroviral drugs. And the important thing to notice here is that 
there was a natural decline in AIDS and AIDS deaths prior to the appearance of these antiretroviral drugs, these combination drugs. But even more uh, sinister, I guess, is notice that within months after the appearance of these ARVs, the natural declines in AIDS and AIDS deaths stopped abruptly. <laughs> this is exactly the opposite of what you would expect if these drugs were actually uh, promoting health and reducing mortality. In fact, the CDC's own data makes a strong case for the fact that the antiretroviral drugs are very dangerous things. They're causing AIDS and killing people. 